And uh, and so there I am in 1992. Um, the uh, the original concept that I had pitched to the Air Force was uh, was for surgery. In fact, the reason it was called virtual fixtures was the idea of okay, imagine you're a surgeon and you're performing a, an operation and you want to make an incision. Um, you can do that freehand, or you can use some kind of uh, fixture, physical fixture that could guide your hand or prevent you from from going too deep. And the concept was, well, what if that could be a virtual fixture? All right, see the real patient, um, perform a procedure, have uh, have visual cues, have but that you but things you can also feel, uh, so that it would actually guide your scalpel, prevent you from going too deep. Uh, and I often compared a virtual fixture to to it's like a ruler in the real world. You know, a ruler is a really simple fixture. It can help you draw a straight line. Uh, you can draw a straight line much better than you can ever do it freehand and it reduces a lot of your mental effort uh, and so you can perform faster and so this idea was well what if we could do that in in the real world with virtual fixtures that you could see and feel and interact with and um, and enhance performance and so that was the goal of of this project uh, the we weren't going to build a system for uh for surgery uh, back in 1992 uh, so the idea was to prove the concept uh, with a a test of human performance and there's a standard test called a Fitz law task which uh, quantifies human performance and it's uh, it's usually involved in taking a, um, a peg and moving it between holes of different distances and asking people to perform it as fast as they can and and uh, and seeing uh, and actually quantifying their 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 skill their performance their dexterity and the idea of the virtual fixtures project was to say okay what if, what if I have people perform this task but then create a variety of these uh, virtual fixtures that would be added to the environment and allow them to put to perform the task with greater skill. And so uh, some of these fixtures were uh, were flat planes or, or series of flat planes that you would literally feel when when you peg bumped into it, you would it would feel extremely real as you're performing the task. Uh, some became more uh, more sophisticated cones and and textures you would feel. Uh, some of them actually involved spatial audio. And so this was the idea of a virtual fixture project. People would come in and uh and they would perform the task uh this is uh a really short video um i, I don't think this has ever been seen before because i had to actually buy an old camcorder on ebay and you had to actually get access to this this very very old video and it worked and it allowed people to perform significantly better in, in many cases uh almost twice as fast in performing these these tests uh, some of the experiments were also uh telepresence related where what if I'm controlling a remote robot say up in orbit and there's a time delay can I put fixtures in that would allow you to perform better and it, it turns out that, that you could and so uh, so that was a virtual fixtures project it was the, really the first time I'd ever experienced a, a, an environment where I could see and feel and, and hear um, the real world merged with virtual objects that seemed uh, seemed realistic despite uh, low fidelity compared to today's uh, today's world uh, and what's exciting is that you know this, this early concept of, uh, of virtual fixtures of, of really of mixed reality for medical is really one of the first fields that's that's being deployed uh, just uh, just this year. Uh, mixed reality, uh, the first mixed reality system got FDA approval for deployment in uh, in surgical suites in in operating rooms. This is a system from MediView. Uh, they're one of a number of companies uh, that, that are doing this and. Um, it's really happening, and it will become, I believe, central to to all surgical uh, all surgical uh, operations. Um, uh, and so, uh, really, you know, f from uh, from my perspective, it's been really exciting to watch uh, this field evolve over the last thirty plus years. Uh, this is a picture of me from 1992, and then a picture of me from uh, from 2022. And, and uh, the reason this picture was created was to show how the technology has has refined so much. You know, back in 1992, obviously, it's a crazy amount of hardware, and 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 most of the hardware is not even shown in this image. There's um, there's multiple computers running, you know, full full big computers. In uh, on the other side is uh, the uh, the Meta Quest Pro, the computers inside the headset. All the trackings inside the, the hand controllers and the, and the headset, and um, you know, everything is has been shrunk down remarkably over the last uh, over the last 30 years. I mean, it's it's mind-boggling. Um, which brings me back to my you know the prediction from the beginning, which was that by 2032, again, I really do believe that lightweight, stylish, powerful mixed reality eyewear will replace the mobile phone as the primary interface for our digital lives. Again, it requires. Uh, 
next generation hardware that is that is smaller and lighter. But there are devices today uh, from HTC, uh, from Apple, uh, from Meta that provide quality mixed reality experiences. Uh, other companies, Magic Leap, and um, there's lots of efforts to make this technology uh, lighter and cheaper. Which again is why I believe that if the these first next generation products come out in 25, 26, we still have uh, substantial time before that to happen. Uh, we could see this rapid adoption period and then market dominance. And, and some people say, well, why is it going to, why would it only take six years, five years to, to go from first consumer products to, to market dominance? And, and I say, uh, there's a really good example of this, which is the iPhone, right? When the iPhone came out, uh, 2007, nobody thought they needed a smartphone. Nobody thought they would spend, you know, 500 to a thousand dollars on a smartphone. People thought phones were for making for making phone calls. And um, when the iPhone came out, it was early adopters, um, but suddenly there was content that you could not experience if, unless you had a smartphone. And so over a very short period of time, five or six years, uh, people felt like they were missing out if they didn't have a smartphone. They, they were not being able to access the same information that other people were accessing. And, and it only took six years to go from that iPhone moment until the majority, more than 50% of phones sold were smartphones. I think the same, uh, the same dynamic will, will happen with mixed reality uh, glasses, headsets, uh, where uh, if you're walking down the street and you're wearing a, a mixed reality uh, glasses and you can see content and information uh, that other people can't access with a traditional phone or, or it's very awkward to access it, they will feel like they're missing out and it will be that same dynamic and uh, and that suggests that within just five or six years uh, from that first iPhone moment you know, of a quality mixed reality, uh, low cost um, headset, adoption can happen very, very quickly.